This 10th year of Daily Tech News Show is made possible by its listeners. Thanks to all of you, including Carmine Bailey, Vince Power, Rodrigo Smith Zapata, and our new patron, Eric. On this episode of DTNS, Lenovo announces the Legion Go handheld, plus quite a few other things. Autonomous drones, surprise and delight. And our tech IPOs finally making a comeback? This is the Daily Tech News for Friday, September 1st, 2023. From Studio Underscore, I'm Sarah Lane. From Columbus, Ohio, I'm Rob Dunwood. Drawing the top tech stories from Cleveland, I'm Len Peralta. And I'm the show's producer, Roger Chang. Rob DeMello, Chief Technology Officer at Skidmore Owens and Merrill. So good to have you on the show. You're so good at this. You were just going to introduce yourself. I'm so sorry. Don't be sorry. No, it's it's you, you know what you're doing. And that's why you're on the show. Um, and we're going to talk with Rob about all of the things. And those things are going to start with the quick hits. Magic Leap announced its One AR headsets will cease to function after December 31st, 2024. So you have some time. You can't buy a Magic Leap One anymore, but the company says it will be supported through the cutoff date. Support includes outages that impact core functionality, although Magic Leap says we will be at the discretion of what that means. Troubleshooting with customer care, cloud services, valid warranties, all supported through the end of next year. Magic Leap One launched back in 2018, mid-year, powered by a tethered waist-mounted compute pack and included a single-tracked controller with hand-tracking support that came later. So pour out a little liquor. Paris has banned e-scooters following a referendum back in April where 90% of residents, or at least the ones who voted, favored getting rid of them. Tier, Dot, and Lime all previously operated in the city with a combined 15,000 e-scooters. E-bike services in the city aren't affected and privately owned scooters are still allowed. Dot says it will rehome its 5,000 scooters to other markets with high demand such as Belgium and Tel Aviv. Tier says the majority of its scooters will go back to Germany or Warsaw, Poland. And Lime will ship their scooters to Lille, London, Copenhagen, and cities in Germany. Hmm. Yeah, scooters. Uh, out of Paris into other markets. Meta is doing whatever it can to bump up the engagement of its new social network threads. Saw a lot of signups and then a lot of drop in engagement. And as noted by many users across the world, is using Instagram, the company is anyway, to show a for you on threads carousel with a button to open threads directly from your phone. A company spokesperson for Meta said, we have added a number of new features to the app since launch and are now making it easier for people to see their latest content from threads directly on Instagram. Starfield is already in the hands of some folks with early access, and if you were lamenting the exclusion of support for NVIDIA's deep learning super sampling or DLSS, don't worry, modders got you. IGN notes that at least three Nexus mods have created a mod that adds not only support for DLSS, but also Intel's XE super sampling or XESS. Mods also added a field of view slider not currently available in the game's own PC version. Starfield's official launch date is September 6th. Sony announced the PlayStation Portal will launch on November 15th. The Portal will be available to stream PlayStation 5 games over Wi-Fi. It also costs $200. Pre-orders now open in the U.S., U.K., France, and Belgium from Sony's official PlayStation Direct storefront. Sony wrote on its blog for PlayStation that other retailers will offer pre-orders starting September 29th. That's when other markets will be open uh, and support will be open as well for regions like Canada and Japan. And those are the quick hits. Okay, let's talk about Lenovo's big old Friday dump. 
Don't know why he did it, Lenovo, but we're going to talk about it because everybody else is. Lenovo announced the Legion Go, its first Windows-powered gaming handheld that's set for an October release for $700. Specs include an 8.8-inch QHD plus screen, an AMD Ryzen at Z1 Extreme processor, a 49.2 watt-hours battery, and controllers that can pop out from the uh, the chassis. <laughs> the Verge notes that it's less of a Valve Steam Deck competitor and more of a cross between the Nintendo Switch and Asus's ROG Ally. The screen is 2560 by 1600 with a 14, uh, I'm sorry, 144 hertz refresh rate. 1440 would be great, but no, that's not what we have here. The guts also include 16 gigs of LPDDR5X RAM and up to one terabytes of internal storage. There's also a 3.5 millimeter audio combo jack. Some people will be excited about that. Two USB-Cs, one on the front and one on the back, and a micro SD reader. Lenovo also announced a new Legion 9i, also slated for an October release for a very specific $4,399. For that price, you get a 16-inch gaming laptop with a self-contained liquid cooling system. This differs from traditional air cooling and is designed to handle much more thermal mass. Oh, but Rob, Lenovo did not stop there. No, no. We've got one other announcement. The company's new Legion glasses function as an external monitor for devices that support screen pass-through for AR glasses. Now, you might say, oh, so it's for the Legion Go, and what Rob just explained uh, is the Legion 9i. Yeah, those are the obvious uh, companions, but you do have other device options when compatible. The Legion glasses mimic a 27 inch monitor and can display at 60 hertz and 1080p per eye. The display also uses a micro LSD panel, plugs into a USB port, and features built in speakers, sound, and brightness controls. You might say, I like it. What does it cost? $329. So if you add all All these right, up- Rob, De- Rob DeMillo. <laughs> Let's talk about let's talk let's talk about these. Uh, what are you buying, if anything? Uh, you've, all right, so I'm I'm going to roll back also to the Sony conversation because I think it all kind of ties in. Sure. So mm-hmm. so the the I'm confused. I, Reddit is making fun of the Sony product, right? Like if if you go to if you go to the Sony subreddit, there there's just it's brutal. And I think a lot of that has to do with the fact that there's already the Sony Play app that runs on Sony phones and, and all that, which I use, and it, it works really well. So I, I, I have no interest in getting the, 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 the Sony, um, what do they call it, the uh, portal. Uh-huh. In the case of Lenovo, it, it's an interesting little product. I th- I'm always confused by companies that cap out at 16 gigs of memory on these things because you're going to notice that, right? It's Great that it has all these other features, and I'm one of the people that's jazzed about the audio combo jack, like that that kind of stuff. I, I dig all of that, um, but this thing is is going to make or break itself on on how fast it runs because it's a gaming rig, right? And so having 16 gigs, I I, I do not understand. So there's that. Yeah, I kind of I kind of agree with Rob because here's the thing. When these are PCs, I mean, this is a, you know, it's it's a computer for a lack of a better word. You expect it to run like your computer, but they're, they're cramming all these parts in. They don't give it an abundance of RAM. So when you compare it to running on a computer, you're going to think it's a little bit sluggish or you're going to think it's a little bit slow um, because they can't put all of the hardware in there because it would be just immensely expensive. So um, I think that, you know, companies are ultimately, they're still, they're, they're chasing steam. And I don't know that anyone has quite figured it out yet. You know, you know, the, the, uh, you know, this, you know, the steam, what steam has is, is kind of awesome. I think everybody is trying to capture that lightning in a bottle again. Yeah, I agree. And, and I, and the 16 gig thing, it's like, I, I, I hate keep harping on it, but it's like a dime. Like, I don't understand, like, <laughs> like, like just put another 16 gig in there. Who cares? Like what, what difference does that even make to you as a, as an OEM? So that's a little odd. And Rob, you're right about the, catching up the steam right i mean it's everyone wants to do it so well let's move on let's talk about uh you know for the first time ever 
a neural network powered autonomous drone has been able to beat human pilots in high speed FPV drone racing. A team of researchers from the University of Zurich and Intel have developed a system called Swift in which they came up with an autonomous breakthrough based largely on machine vision, putting the AI system on a more even footing with human pilots. Yeah, so before Swift uh, came about, researchers had to rely on a special motion capture system, capture system rather, to win against humans. Their new solution uses real-time data collected by an onboard camera, similar to those used by human racers. It also incorporates an integrated inertial measurement unit that measures the drone's acceleration and speed kind of knows what's going on in real time. That data is set to a neural network for processing, which allows the fully autonomous drone to win against multiple human FPV champions. Now, my first thought here was like, oh, it's like chess, <laughs> where the machine is finally better than the human, but for drone racing. I think chess is actually more interesting. Like ch chess is more of an interesting problem. I mean, this is a, this is a very robotic task. Like, like for, for uh, AI to jump into this, I, you know, I, I think this is the first time that a AI has powered a physical device in a contest kind of situation. I, I could be wrong about that, but that's what I remember seeing earlier. Um, it, it's, it's, I mean, of course it does better than people, right? It's like, I don't understand why this is even uh, a thing, like why this is a news article. I mean, maybe one of you guys can explain it better than I am. Well, but it's I mean, like, well, yeah. okay, I, so compared to the, you know, ongoing conversation ad nauseum really about uh, autonomous vehicles on, mm -hmm. you know, on, on roads, you know, sure. and whether or not they... They, you know, they take out a lot of human error, but at the same time, they're not humans. Uh, so we're still doing some sort of a hybrid form of both. I feel like this is a little bit more of a, it's that conversation, but hey, look, you know, look what the machine can do. Yeah, but it, it, it's kind of like a, like autonomous vehicle. That's a much harder problem. Right. There, sure. there's, there's, there's well, yeah, a, this is this is roads a con you have to yeah to. yeah this is a confined course with a very strict set of rules nothing's going to get in your way except the other contestants so it, it just feels like it's like okay sure I think what's cool about this is that when you think about these F these drones are relatively small so for them to be able to get enough stuff on the drone for it to be able to still fly at these speeds i mean these things are going really really fast yeah. um and it and to be self-contained i mean it is fully autonomous that is kind of the thing here because before they had to actually rely on these high-end uh imaging systems that you couldn't put onto the device you had to you know the, the, they had to be tethered um you know even if wirelessly to something else to do that processing and that's now happening on the actual drone the other thing is when you start looking at where this technology can go um, you know, like search and rescue was something that was, that was mentioned. You can send these drones out and they can fly very fast while they have their charge and actually mm -hmm. survey large areas relatively quickly. Um, you know, there are, there are other things that they could do, such as, uh, you know, forest monitoring or space exploration or just things where you need devices that they don't know exactly their environment. So they need to be able to make the decisions on their own. This mm -hmm. is the precursor to that. So I, I think eventually this could really be some cool technology mm -hmm. as we build Skynet. <laughs> yeah, yeah. Oh, God. Oh, God. We're all going to die. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Yeah. I mean, I, uh, the Maui fires come to mind for something like this, right? Uh, you know, you've got a bunch of humans who are working as hard as they can to make sure that uh, everybody who, you know, needs to be safe can be. Um, this is great technology for something like that, where it's not even hours or minutes, but seconds that matter. Um, and, you know, I can see those situations being really great uh examples of why why this when, when rob demillo where you were like is this cool it's like well it can be it can be cool it, it's, it's you know it's going to get cooler too because you know one of the things the story notes is that as soon as parameters changed mm -hmm. the the drones became significantly less efficient so basically they were trained on a very specific course of very specific lighting with go yeah. gates in specific locations 
And as soon as that changed, they, you know, I don't want to say they fell out of the bottom, but they don't do as well when they're not trained specifically on the environment that they're in. So there's still some work to be done here, but the fact that they could actually in a, you know, control situation beat human champions. I mean, th these, these gentlemen are, you know, people are really good at uh, flying these drones. The fact that they, they could actually get that done to me is pretty impressive. Yeah. But that's kind of my point, right? I mean, it, it if you take one of these things and you put them out in the field, you know, to Sarah's point about looking for folks in the, the Maui fires, it's a different environment. Like it, it's a, it's a lot, there's a lot more activity yeah. going on around the drone. They right. can bring the drone down. Yeah. Also, Variables di differ. Yeah, hundred percent. Right. And so it's a different problem set. Um, also, I would look towards the military, right? We, we've had drones for a long time in the military. I mean, there's, there's tech in there. Um, I wouldn't even call it AI. It's just, it's just very good at dealing with environmental situations and, and, and what have you. But uh, it, it, you know, it, we should be beating on their door for rescue drones and that sort of thing. I, I, I just, I just don't see how this made the news. That's my only comment about it. It seems very sort of computer science 101 or something. <laughs> yeah, I know I'm being kind of a, kind of a goofball with this, but it's you're just, just too smart. I'm curmudgeoning. Like, I'm is, this is CS101. Yeah, I'm, I'm yeah. yeah I, I get where you're coming from. I just, I think we're early and at some point they have to try it in order for sure. it to be what it's going to be at some it's someday. So sure. this isn't, you know, like said, this is not the Terminator T1000 yet. You know, there's, this is like the, the T6. <laughs> they're, they're just, they're trying to get to that point. And I think that eventually the use cases will absolutely make themselves, uh, you know, available to us. Excellent. Well, Tom Merritt is, uh, he's hopefully having the best time in Seoul, Korea right now, but his how to make a great podcast class was a big hit. Many of you said we weren't able to make that class. Where can we, you know, find it somewhere else? Good news. You can still get the online course at our DTNS Patreon store. Tom explains the fundamentals of producing a really good podcast. And, you know, who else better to do it than Tom Merritt? He is good at this. You can download the class or stream it over at patreon.com slash DTNS slash shop. All right, we hear terms like IPO, initial public offering, company going public, NASDAQ. These are all terms we talk about on DTNS. Uh, if you're listening, you know what those terms are. But tech IPOs have had a hard time of it for the better part of two years, maybe a little bit more, depending on where you are on the spectrum. But things seem to be blooming again. This week, grocery delivery startup Instacart and data and marketing automation company Clavio both filed IPOs. Uh, obviously, we talked about this last week. SoftBank-owned uh, SoftBank owned arm, uh, owned chip designer arm, <laughs> which has an arm, I guess, which is SoftBank, announced plans to join the NASDAQ seven years after being taken private in a $32 billion acquisition. So we've got some movement, right, Rob? Yeah, absolutely. Yeah. So for anyone who isn't following financial markets so closely, a lot of this is locked into timing. For example, Instacart's valuation was shaved ahead of its IPO, which made it more attractive to investors. Meanwhile, DoorDash, let's call it Instacart's closest public market comparison, trades at 3.8 times Instacart's revenue. The way SEC rules work, management teams and bankers have to wait at least 15 days after the IPO filing before they can start their roadshow with an offering taking place two weeks later. So, so Rob, you know, I know you've got some, some uh, expertise in this area. Can you explain to us what a road show is and does the timing of the road show significantly impact it in any meaningful ways? Well, the, the, the IPO timings uh, are, are important, right? So there's, uh, there's been less IPOs obviously over the last several years because of everything that's been going on in the economy. Um, and then the IPOs themselves within a given year, they've got seasons, I guess that's probably the best way to think about it. Uh, you, you want to avoid the holiday season. You want to avoid summer because nobody is paying attention. But if you, so if you target the spring and the fall, which is usually when these things happen, um, it's not a rule, but it's usually when they happen, um, they'll go on these things called road shows. And, and you can think of a road show as, as like an album release party. <laughs> Kind of, you know, we're coming. Like you're hit, you're hit, you're getting on the tour bus. Yeah, you're hitting the road. Yeah, hundred percent. Getting people pumped. 
Yeah, hundred percent. There, there's usually uh, involved involved in the um, uh, an IPO is usually uh, something that includes um, the, the board, uh, the executive team at the small company, and they often hire uh, an underwriter, which is a, a, an organization. It's either a, a person or a bank or a financial institution that um, will will put themselves financially at risk in order to in order to help uh, uh, increase the the cost of the, or the, the, the PR for the IPO. And so some combination of those folks um, will put together slide presentations, maybe a demo, uh, and they'll hit key market cities, uh, you know, Boston, San Francisco, New York, um, in Canada, it'd be like Vancouver and Toronto. And, and they'll go on these, these road shows and it's ex- literally what you're thinking of. There'll be a big stage presence, um, drones, <laughs> <laughs> you know, drones and like Baby lights drones. and cameras, and, yeah, and all that stuff, and and they'll <laughs> they'll try and they'll try and drum up support, and and um, more times than not, it does exactly what it's supposed to do. Back in twenty twenty, I think it was when Alibaba hit the markets, um, a lot of their success was based off of some of these these roadshows. So so it can go several different ways it can either be a, a flop of a, of a of a rojo or it can be a rojo that actually generates a lot of interest and excitement and activity around the company that's that's trying to pop onto the market now okay so rob you mentioned uh summer and holiday season being sort of like dead yeah. times yeah the summer i get uh <laughs> we're in our summer slump now although there's plenty of news to talk about uh thankfully for us but Holiday season, I don't really understand because isn't a holiday quarter supposed to be, uh, especially for, I don't know, if you're selling hardware, you know, a place where you're going to make a lot of your money? For a consumer, yeah. But but if you're on a roadshow, you, you, you're not interested in the consumer at this point. If you've got a company that you're trying to bring on market um, and you go on one of these roadshows, your target is going to be the investors, financial institutions, uh, individual investors that want to like, you know, get in on the ground so floor. So it's not about That's, what you're selling. It's right. about who's yeah. buying yeah. into the eventual sale. And, 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 and let's face it, like in, in, in the holiday season, all the venture capitalists and financial institutions are all like skiing and stow and things. Yeah, <laughs> they're, 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 not paying, they're not paying any yeah. attention at all. Yeah. Right. So long, 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 long time ago, I actually got to attend a road show. Uh, you know, I, I was, I was kind of working, I was supporting the people who were doing the presentations and making sure that they were technically correct in the things that they were saying. Mm-hmm. But Rob, as you said, it's, it's kind of like, it's, it's, it's a giant party yeah. of, of people and institutions with lots of money and you're trying to get them to get in on that IPO. So, right. so, you know, Sarah, to your point, it's, uh, yeah, that, doing it right before Thanksgiving, that is not the time to have it done because the people gotcha. you want there are gotcha. in Davos or yeah. something like that. They're, they're not there. Yeah, they don't care. <laughs> <laughs> they have no interest in what's going on in the market at that point. Well, so, um, so, so Rob DeMillo, uh, what, what are you thinking about, you know, we've got uh, obviously ARM, big one, um, and that was being mm-hmm. teased for, you know, a yeah. year plus, uh, and you know we're finally there. Um, you've got a couple of uh, a couple of other tech IPOs that have sparked people to say, "Okay, we're back." What do you think? Uh, the, uh, what do I think about IPOs being back? Yeah, they, they've never gone away, really. But um, it's definitely I'm hearing more and more and more about it. Right. Uh, so you know, it's gone through this kind of cyclic. Uh, adventure over the last couple of decades where there were a ton of IPOs, a lot of them just fizzled on, on hitting the ground. Right. And that soured a lot of folks getting involved in IPOs. So the IPO market dropped and then it's been too long. And so the, you know, so there's so just this little ebb and flow to the way all this stuff works. Um, mm-hmm. You know, the, the global pandemic did not help uh in this last uh this this last couple of years but as we're starting to come out of the the cloud um no pun intended as we're starting to come out of the 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 pandemic cloud uh (laughs) people are starting to get interested again and people want to to turn these engines back on right and it's not just in the tech industry it's it's a lot of industries you're seeing ipos starting to show up again but it's a lot more discriminatory so back in the heyday uh, anybody with a, with a website and, you know, a, a plastic trinket to sell, 
could do an IPO. And now it's uh, not quite sure bets, but people that are companies that are a little bit more backed and have a little bit more traction in the market and a lot more people using their services or buying their product or wh whatever the heck it is. Um, and, and those are the ones that are generating all of the interest right now. And I think eventually we're going to wind up going back to, you know, I've done this thing in the basement and, and I think it's really good and I need some money. Uh, so I'm going to try an IPO myself, but, um, right now it's, 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 it is the Instacarts and the arms and the, 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 the companies that have been around for a little bit. Well, um, I'm not sure when you Rob or Rob, uh, last <laughs> bought a Hallmark do card, uh, <laughs> to, <laughs> to give to a loved one, you know, maybe it was an anniversary or a birthday or a, you know, dads and grads type thing. Hallmark, the card company, is partnering with Venmo to let people send money along with physical greeting cards. Okay, let me explain. Hallmark plus Venmo cards will let anybody who wants to send money choose a card for a specific, specific occasion, then scan a QR code, and then set an amount that they want to give that is associated with that card. So all I have to do is give you a card and say, you know, congratulations. <laughs> also, scan my QR code and get that $40 that I'm also giving you. So if it's my birthday, I get my physical card. I scan the code. I get my money in my Venmo account, if I have a Venmo account, which many people do. Venmo says that 78% of its users are already sending money as gifts. So this is something that Venmo is obviously banking on, you know, people wanting to do more of. The new option will cost you it's five dollars it's available online in physical hallmark stores and other select retailers so you are paying for the option to be on the pulse of tech i suppose yeah. i have a I have my question on this is are you paying five dollars for the card or are you paying five dollars for the you're option to send someone for the money. option to give people money so you're paying Which 495 for the card free plus to do yeah. It's a $5 fee to participate okay. in this fun experiment. That's what's going on here. I, I, but I see, I see where let's other Let's say going. my <laughs> Aunt Bertha lives, I don't know, in Belgium, right? We mm. were talking about Belgium earlier, so it's on my mind. Um, and she can't be near me. There's no, you know, I, I don't, I don't know. I don't know if this is like the worst idea or the best idea. It, it it would be a really good idea if there was no surcharge, like that. Like I I didn't realize there was a five dollar surcharge for doing this, or, or even if it was like fifty nine cents or something. But the fact that you have to spend money, yeah, it's a to send bit. money, yeah, when you could send it for free without actually doing this, yeah, is kind of confusing. I mean, I yeah. I have to assume that uh, these companies are used to people, some, myself included, who sometimes go like. Oh, you know, let's say I'm, I don't know, um, putting PayPal money into my bank account. Like, mm -hmm. do I want it to be immediate? That's a little bit of a charge. Or do I want to wait three days, which would be free? Most of the time, it's three days. But sometimes I'm like, yeah, immediate. I got to pay up front. So I think that this is a little bit more of that. Yeah, that, that makes a lot of sense. Although, you know, it, there's something thrilling, like, I remember being a teen and opening up the car and the twenty dollar bill fell out. That, that's pretty cool. Oh my god! Open, yeah, open, was, there's a QR uh, code and it's like, why is my aunt Matilda trying to sell me golf clubs or whatever the heck it is? <laughs> 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 like, like, well, it's been a long oh. time since we were children. Uh, I was yes, telling the guys yes, just yes. the other day, but uh, you know, every Christmas, my uncle Rich uh, wrote me a check for forty dollars. Oh, it was checks. always in the card. Right. You know, where I was like, $40. Oh, my gosh. You know, at the time, you I could buy anything you. with $40. Mm -hmm. All right. Well, uh, you know, if you if you like Hallmark cards and you use Venmo, that is an option for you potentially going forward. But uh, we've been talking ad nauseum about all this stuff today. So, Len Peralta, let's check in with you and figure out what you've been drawing. Oh, you know, uh, I know that Rob DeMilla was not excited about the uh, drones <laughs> too much. 
Sorry. So, but uh, but maybe this my art today will help that. You know, so uh, I don't know if this is a thing around the country, but here in Cleveland we have an art, an air show, and uh, I'm I've been thinking a lot about the air show, and so this is a little bit of an homage to that. Uh, it's AI beating uh, the the drone. Which is uh, uh, which is run by dumb all human, dumb all human. If you get that, um, and uh, you know, it's uh, that's the name of this piece. It's called Dumb All Human, and you can get it at my uh, uh, online store, uh, lenperaltastore.com, or at my uh, Patreon, patreon.com forward slash Len, where you back me at the Len Lover level and you, you get this image. And uh, I know it's not exactly the way that drones work. Like, don't talk to me about that, but it's more of kind of an interpretation. <laughs> so enjoy. I, I'm more excited Please. about your drawing Artistic, than I am about yeah, the I mean, <laughs> That's what I thought. That's, I thought you might like that, thing. Rob. Thank you. <laughs> so, Rob DeMilo, so can you just give, you know, Thank you so much for being on the show with us this oh, uh, you know this Friday afternoon. So could you tell everybody how they can contact you? You know, we, we, you know, tell us what what you got going on, what, what you're doing. I am an opportunity I, to talk I, to the world. You all know this already, but I'm the technology officer over at Skidmore, Owings and Merrill, uh, architecture firm, worldwide architecture firm. You can find out uh, all about me and all the places that I am by going to about.me slash Rob DeMello, and uh, you can connect with me there. I'm always around and available. Excellent. Well, we're so happy to have you on the show with us, as yeah. always. Absolutely. And patrons, stick around for the extended show. Good day, Internet. It's our second round of GDI debates. We take on great questions of the day. Come debate with us. Oh, the last time we did this, Rob and I uh, were doing uh, uh, questionnaires. Space. It was, and it was, it was he won. I don't want to talk about you, it. You guys did um, not know that I was a space nerd. I think that's what it was. Yeah. I think no. I think we were talking about space or something like that. So. Yeah. <laughs> well, just a reminder that our show, Daily Tech News Show, is live Monday through Friday. We're always on on demand, of course. But if you can catch us live, we'd love to have you. 4 p.m. Eastern, 2000 UTC. Find out more at dailytechnewsshow.com slash live. Just a reminder, we are off Monday for the U.S. Labor Day holiday. But we're back on Tuesday with Patrick Norton joining us. Talk to you then. Have a great weekend, everyone. This week's episodes of Daily Tech News Show were created by the following people. Host producer and writer Tom Merritt. Host producer and writer Sarah Lane. Executive producer and booker Roger Chang. Producer, writer, and co-host Rob Dunwood. Video producer and Twitch producer, Jill Coots. Technical producer, Anthony Lemos. Spanish language host, writer, and producer, Dan Campos. Science co correspondent, Dr. Nikki Ackermans. Social media producer and moderator, Zoe Detterdeen. Our mods, Beatmaster, W. Scott is one, BioCow, Cap Kipper, Steve Guadarrama, Paul Reese, Matthew J. Stevens, AKE, Vet Gadget Virtuoso, and JD Galloway. Mod and video hosting by Dan Christensen. Music and art provided by Martin Bell, Dan Luters, Mustafa A, Acast, and Len Peralta. Live art performed by Len Peralta. Acast ad support from Tatiana Matias. Patreon support from Tom McNeil. Contributors to this week's show include Nicole Lee, Scott Johnson. Plus guests on this week's show included Tasia Custodi and Rob DeMillo. And thanks to all our patrons who make the show possible. This show is part of the Frog Pants Network. Get more at frogpants.com. Diamond Club hopes you have enjoyed this program. <laughs>